okay um, so in the last class we <coughs> we talked about the tpc tpi that is the tons per centimeter immersion and tons per inch immersion the amount of uh, weight that needs to be put to produce a centimeter of uh, submersion uh, of any body so after this uh, we will now take a look at some of the uh, some other phenomenon that goes along with this this is uh, known as the trimming so trim trim is a phenomenon um, trim is a phenomenon that is associated with a longitudinal uh, submersion that is if you have a ship like this and if the ship goes in any of these direction if it uh, oscillates about this degree of freedom then it is known as uh, trimming okay so trimming the other one which we dealt about till now was about the ship uh, in if this is the longitudinal direction if a ship is able if ship is made to oscillate in this fashion it is known as healing so healing we are now going into trimming the same way as you see healing that is we have the kg kb um, uh, then lcb kg kb etc and uh, the meta center the the new position b5 the meta center we uh, discussed all that and that is all seen through a transverse direction that is um, the view is from the transverse direction that is if the ship is like this we are seeing it from here so it is a transverse view now suppose we see the same thing in a longitudinal direction means like this this we usually call it as a profile so we are seeing a ship like this okay so this kind of um, uh, profile will this is an another phenomenon that will um, um, that will occur uh, in the ships now um, we instead of seeing these um, meta center uh, the center of buoyancy etc in a vertical direction in a, in a uh, transverse direction we can also see the same thing in the longitudinal direction that is um, if you see the the same we are going to follow the same principles between the transverse direction the only thing is the difference between the transverse direction and the longitudinal direction other than that all the principles remain the same there is a meta center m there is a center of buoyancy b0 it is uh, it because of the trimming instead of healing remember that we were talking about healing in the previous section so instead of that if the body starts trimming because of that trimming there is a diff shift in the center of buoyancy like this for example i'll draw this figure so this is the initial let me draw it better so this is the ship and this is its water line uh, this is its water line initial water line and because of its um, movement it causes it to trim like this okay so the ship is now trimmed through an angle theta uh, i would like to mention that usually healing is denoted healing angle is denoted by phi and the trimming angle which i have drawn there this is known as the trimming angle the trimming angle is usually denoted by theta so you have theta the trimming of the ship and this is the let's assume this is the forward side of the ship and this is the aft side of the ship so we define it like this this distance is known as trim by head and this distance is known as trim by stern so uh, the front part the amount by which the front part trims uh, from the mean mean water line so there was an original mean water line the distance from which it trims that distance is known as the trimming by head and the aft side of the ship the distance through which it trims is known as the uh, uh, is the aft that is known as the trimming by stern so 
um, we have this trimming and there is a slight ambiguity or uh, vagueness about what you really call as the trim. For example, trim can be this in this figure, this trimming by head can be called as a trim, trimming by stern can be called as a trim or the whole distance between the forward and the afterward trim can be called as the trim itself. Um, so, the distance between this distance, this distance between this and this, uh, between this and the, these two, this distance can also be called as the trim. In uh, to prevent ambiguity in our course, we will find, we will define the total distance between the forward topmost part and the aft, mo aft uh, bottom most part, the distance between those two, we will call it as the trim. This is the distance through which the ship has totally tilted. Okay. So, we now have a uh, ship like this. Um, so, as you can see, um, we always assume that the, uh, it is not really an assumption, it is always true that the amount of uh, sh ship that has gone down, that is submerged part of the ship is equal to the emerged part of the ship. Um, it is valid to some extent and um, that is that principle we are assuming here. So, trimming by stern uh, is most likely equal to the trimming by uh, head. So, the trim by stern and trim by uh, head are both al almost equal in magnitude and that is and therefore, the total trim is twice this value, twice the trim by head or twice the trim by stern. So, uh, it is twice this. So, that is what we will assume in our uh, study, in our, co in our uh, lectures. Okay. So, this figure I will keep here. Okay. Th then, um, this distance. Now, for our purposes, let us do one thing. Let us consider a rectangular barge that is a barge that is uh, with a rectangular shape. Uh, this is the rectangular barge. So, this is the water line W L. So, this is the uh, rectangular barge has trimmed through an angle theta. So, initially let us assume this to be its center of gravity. G is its center, uh, let us assume it a little below. Let G be the center of gravity G 0 and B is even below this B 0 is the center of buoyancy. So, as you can see here, we are seeing things from a um, longitudinal perspective or from a profile perspective, it is no longer uh, from the uh, uh, from the transverse direction as before and we are not dealing with heel here, we are dealing with trim here. Trimming is uh, dealt with in the same manner as you deal with the um, healing and therefore, you have the position of G 0, B 0 and because of this trimming, the B 0 shifts to B 1 and um, if you put a vertical from B 1, it will hit the, uh, it will hit the, uh, the vertical from initial vertical from G 0 at the meta center. This is the meta center that we are seeing from a longitudinal perspective, perspective that is we are seeing the profile of it. This meta center which we are seeing as a profile is a meta center due to trimming or the uh, shift in the, here the shift in the center of buoyancy is in the longitudinal direction. So, as you know, this shift in the center of buoyancy is known as LCB. The, uh, this center of buoyancy, we, we, here we are dealing with the longitudinal center of buoyancy, that is what I mean. So, that is the initial position and the final position of the longitudinal center of buoyancy. The um, previous healing dealt with the transverse center of buoyancy, which is in short called the center of buoyancy uh, B, B0. 
this is B0 in the longitudinal direction. So, so okay. And similarly, this M that we see here is not no longer designated as M, it is called as ML. So, B0 ML is the longitudinal uh, metacentric radius. and G0 ML is the longitudinal metacentric height. Okay, so, it shifts like this. Then, um, we can draw a perpendicular from G0 to this line. This is a perpendicular. We will call that ZL as you remember before we called G z to be the writing arm. This is the restoring arm or the, uh, the um, or this is the arm which causes the ship to come back to its original position. In the same way, when the ship trims, uh, a restoring arm is produced again, a longitudinal restoring arm that is G z l. So, G z l will represent the um, longitudinal, longitudinal writing arm. is known as the longitudinal writing arm and therefore, here at um, here at um, B 0 through this initial vertical there is a horizontal line delta and through this there is uh, another line another force delta acting. So, here you have the weight delta and um, here you have here you have the in the final state that is when the ship is trimmed uh, you have the center of buoyancy here and through that center of buoyancy acts a force delta that is the um, uh, the uh, the weight of the ship equal that is equal to the weight of the ship you know because the ship is floating. So, delta the weight of the ship acts upwards in the acts as the buoyancy force it is called the buoyancy force acts upwards along B 1 uh, in the vertical direction and between this and this. Uh, big, the vertical distance G Z L produces a writing arm when because of this force and this writing arm it produces what is called as a writing moment. So, in this case we get a writing moment which is given by um, writing moment which is given by G Z L into delta it is equal to delta into G M sin theta. Now, G M L sin theta, M L sin theta, this is the same formula that you remember for healing. Uh, we discussed about the uh, restoring arm and G, G Z and we talked about the restoring moment delta into G Z. This and um, we have said that G Z is equal to G M sin phi for healing. Same principle is holding here delta G Z L. Uh, is the longitudinal uh, writing arm. So, delta G z l is equal to delta G m l sin theta. Okay. Then, uh, let us look at this figure again. Let me draw a horizontal here. As this is the first station, this is the last station, the distance between these two is known as LPP distance between that is known as LPP. So, tan theta here. So, it is clear. So, tan theta is equal to this distance divided by LPP which is now let us assume that the ship has trimmed by by 1 meter. So, we are going to assume that the ship has now healed by 1 meter. Therefore, what is tan theta? Tan theta is equal to that 1 meter divided by LPP as you can see from the figure 1 meter this distance uh, this this distance is the this distance is the trim and we we are now going to assume that this um, trim is 1 meter. So, 1 divided by this distance LPP this distance will give you the 1 by LPP will give you the um, 
the tan theta. So, tan theta is equal to 1 by L p p and same principle holds good with uh, for g m l that is equal to k b plus b m l plus minus k g k g. Okay. So, this formula holds good even for the longitudinal metacentric and um, longitudinal metacentric radius and height and um, this is the expression for g m l here. Now, the um, usually you see that the um, healing we have seen that healing goes uh, for the healing of a ship uh, goes between an angle of um, um, about 3 degrees to about it can go up to 30 degrees 40 degrees healing. Now, for a trimming we do not talk about we, we do not encounter such large uh, angles because mainly in the other case we were looking at the breadth of the ship as the denominator of phi uh, of tan theta whereas in this case we are looking at the length of the ship as the uh, denominator which is very large as a result of which the um, length is very large. So, as a result of which the tan theta is uh, very small. So, we can assume that um, the writing moment writing moment is equal to delta g z l equals delta g m l sin theta and delta g m l sin theta is approximately equal to delta g m l tan theta and we have seen here tan theta is equal to 1 by L p p that is equal to delta g m l by L p p delta g m l by L p p and this expression gives you the restoring moment to change the trim by 1 meter and this is known as m c t. This is a very important term uh, it is used in many uh, in many places you will find its application coming up this is known as m c t the met the moment to change the trim by 1 meter the moment to change the trim by 1 meter. Uh, so, this is some uh, definition about trim we will have to do more about um, uh, trim and the longitudinal metacentric height and all that in a uh, in the in a later um, in a later lecture we will be doing about it. So, right now this is ok. Then um, let us talk about a couple of um, important parameters that we have discussed so far. The first of which is the trim by head. This is the first um, uh, first important thing that we learned in the uh, in uh, the previous few lectures trim by head then we have trim by stern trim by head and trim by stern then volume of displacement this we know what it is we have described it many times then um, LCB uh, so LCB is the longitudinal center of buoyancy So, this is another parameter that we discussed about then L c f we talked about this is known as the longitudinal center of flotation. Longitudinal center of flotation is the centroid of the water plane area we have discussed it. So, this is known as the L c f then we talked about moment to change the trim m c t moment to change the trim by 1 meter this is another important phenomenon uh, another important term. Then we have k m um, which is the uh, you know what is k m it is the distance between the keel and meta center. So, k m then uh, c b Cb, this is the block coefficient. 
then a couple of other coefficients like cm c um, w etc the water plane area coefficient the midship section area coefficient and so on so c so these are some of the important terms that we have um, discussed so far and kb another one it is the uh, kb is the uh, vertical center of it is the vertical uh, center of buoyancy okay so these things are known as hydrostatic particulars or it is known as hydrostatic data note that all the terms do not come under hydros all the details of the ship do not come under the category of hydrostatic data uh, only these things only these terms will come under the category of hydrostatic data uh, these are some of the these hydrostatic data as i said are some of the particulars of the ship itself it's not got anything to do with the loading the transfer of loading and um, even though the, some transfer and loading can produce some changes in this the g factor the kg or uh, k kg or uh, gm do not come under the category of uh, hydrostatic data we do not call them by that name uh, and um, okay so next is something known as the uh, there is another term which we use commonly this is known as the wetted surface area known as a wetted surface area wetted surface area means the total uh, area of the ship that is subjected to uh, the water so the total part of the ship that is wet is known as a wetted surface area so um, if you have the ship uh, if you have the ship like this the whole region that is wetted is known as a wetted surface area um, then we come to water a uh, wetted surface area why is the wetted surface area important there are a couple of parameters that depend upon the wetted surface area they are um, mainly the resistance of the ship that is um, just to give a quick uh, review of resistance this is another course resistance and propulsion in which you will be doing things in greater detail but here i'll just mention some of the details of resistance so the resistance of the ship is really divided into two types of resistances one is known as the wave resistance and the other is known as the um, viscous resistance so uh, these are two types of resistances one is the wave resistance and this is due to the pressure on the hull so the wave resistance is due to the pressure on the hull this um, and viscous resistance is due to the uh, friction or viscosity so this are two types of resistances you encounter in ships um, the wave resistance depends upon the um, form of the ship that is the form of the ship it, it is due it defines the pressure distribution along the hull of the ship and the pressure this pressure distribution for example a pressure difference you know can produce a force so there will be a um, high pressure on the forward part of the ship and there will be a low pressure on the aft part of the ship and therefore there will be a force acting from the forward to the backward side which is the resistance that the ship encounters while it moves forward this is known as the wave resistance this generates two waves in a um, particular form in the back of the ship they are known as kelvin waves uh, kelvin wave form and um, uh, the other resistance is the viscous resistance which is the frictional resistance the frictional resistance is also important and depending upon the type of ship that you have the one resistance or the other resistance will predominate very large ships like container ships and um, oil tankers usually have a very high viscous resistance okay so that is about the wetted surface area of the ship that is the amount of uh, ship that is uh, subject that is subjected to um, the wetting then uh, in this we come to what is known as the uh, hydrostatic curves
So, the hydrostatic curves are um, curves that are drawn in this format. Remember, we put a lot of parameters here and I told you that these parameters are known as hydrostatic particulars starting from KB, CB, KM, MCT, etc. All these are hydrostatic particulars. If I do a graph of draft versus any of these parameters, if I drew a graph between the draft and any of these parameters, curves that look like this, oh, different things, it could be CB, it could be uh, the MCT, it could be the um, LCB, LCF, etc. all these things as a function of draft, this is known as a hydrostatic curve. So, these th things are hydrostatic curves and as you can imagine, um, uh, okay, and another uh, important hydrostatic curve is the one related to sectional area. I have already explained to you what is known as the sectional area. If you have a ship like this and if you have a slice, if you slice the ship's li ship like this, these areas, these areas are known as the sectional areas, this area, this area, Th that is the part of the area that is under the water and through which you have produced the slice. So, this is known as the um, sectional area. So, you can draw the sectional area at various drafts that is also a hydrostatic, that is also a hydrostatic curve. So, sectional area uh, you will have like this, uh, these sectional areas with draft each of them as you can imagine the sectional area will depend upon the station at which you are studying. So, this station, um, this could be station 5, this could be station 4 and this could be station 3. So, these, these stations are, um, so you have a slice through a particular station and you will the area under the curve is known as the uh, hydrostatic curve. Uh, so, this sectional area curve such curves dealing with the sectional area are known as Bongian curves. The word used is Bongian, Bongian curves. Then um, and sometimes usually you draw different curves with uh, you you draw different of these uh, curves that is at different stations starting from um, starting from one uh, uh, station 0 for an instance the aft station 0 1 2 3 4 5 like that we draw the um, we can draw the bongian curves for different stations and uh, this will produce another sectional uh, another kind of uh, um, another curve the whole curve is known as a bongian set so, this Bongian set will give you the uh, Bongian curves at different points, different stations. Then, then we have uh, this, uh, then we have the definition for sectional area. The sectional area is defined as A is equal to Actually, there is not even much of a, a need to uh, explain this. This is the sectional area. Sectional area is the region under the uh, water line. Uh, so it is the region under the water line uh, of one particular station. So, here you are uh, summing up the area from the bottom, the baseline to the uh, water line. So, like this. So, if you have a ship like this, water line like this this is a particular station and you are summing up the area for this particular station. Um, so, this uh, is not this is y dz integral from keel to um, the particular draft. So, so, this is the draft t, this is the keel, keel to the particular draft is known as y dz. This 
is known as the sectional area is the how the defined. Now, we can also have another thing which is the moment from baseline. This represents the moment that you take about the baseline for each of these. So, what have we done? We have divided this into different delta t's that is what this dz stands for dz is different delta t's. Um, if I had to write this it will become sigma n equals 1 to um, some capital N of uh, y i uh, delta t where delta t is the um, into alpha where you have the Simpson's multiplier. So, alpha i into delta t where delta t is the distance between the different water lines. So, the moment from the baseline um, is known as m equals from keel to t z into y dz z into y dz this is known as the um, sectional area as a function of draft. So, this um, is known as the moment from the baseline. So, moment from the baseline is z y dz. Uh, for instance, let us uh, look at one problem. Um, we make what is known as a Bongian sheet. This is how it looks like uh, Bongian sheet. Now, we can also before we do this, we can see that there are some there is another parameter that we can derive from this. This is the moment from the baseline and this is the sectional area and uh, if I uh, found out the moment from the baseline divided by the sectional area curve and summed it up for the entire um, stations. So, what, what I am saying is that this area into for the entire station will give you the total volume under that this gives you the total volume and this gives you the total moment and if I divide the total moment with the total volume what will I get. So, the total moment divided by the total volume will give me the k b ok. K b is the uh, launch uh, the is the vertical center of the position uh, uh, put vertical position of the center of buoyancy k b is the total moment by total volume. So, similarly you will have you you can make the Bongian sheet like this So, you have the station number then trapezoidal multiplier lever arm, sectional area, A i, lever arm, J i, trapezoidal multiplier alpha i, um, then functions of area. Alpha i, a i then um, moment above baseline that is m i then functions of moment about the baseline alpha i m i then you can also have one more you can have the moment from midship alpha i j i a i. So, the moment from midship um, so this is 1, this is 2, 3, 4 what is 5? Five? 5 is equal to 2 into 4 6 equals 3 into 5, 7, 8 equals 2 into 7. Um, so, 
0 half this is how they have made the stations this has nothing to do with uh, the problem as such I mean the way in which with the problem is solved it is just the way in which they have solved it means they have a station at 0 they have a station at half you know what are these half ordinates so you have a station at half half uh, then you have the next station at 1 1 and a half 2 like that uh, like this so 1 half 1 and the corresponding trapezoidal multiplier which we have done uh, will come later as 1 by 4 1 by 2 3 by 4 like that um, lever arm um, lever arm as you see um, this is the lever arm from the station from the initial station so you can do it two ways the lever arm can be taken in two ways one is the you can always take the lever arm from the station 0 so you put the station 0 as 0 then 1 2 3 4 5 like that and or you can have the midship um, midship as station uh, zero, uh, midship as lever 0 and one side as one side to the forward as positive and one side to the aft as negative so that is another possibility so you have like this and um, uh, area equals um, when you do this sigma function of area this is um, sigma moment and this is sigma moment again no not this one so uh, this one so this is sigma moment one and this is another sigma moment these are two moments one is a moment taken from the baseline moments of each of the areas above the baseline and the other one is the uh, moment uh, from the um, from the different stations moment of the different stations so using this uh, sheet we can calculate the uh, this is known as a bongian sheet and using such sheets you can calculate the um, calculate that you can you can always calculate the total volume under the uh, from this with multiplying it by h h by 2 into sigma function of area you will get the total volume volume of the underwater portion or volume of volume submerged you will get the volume submerged and what is the use of the moment what is the use of the sigma moment from the baseline the sigma moment from the baseline sigma moment from baseline divided by sigma uh, function of area will give you the uh, sigma function of sigma moment from baseline divided by sigma function of area will give you the um, the KB okay so this gives you the KB and similarly the sigma moment from station 0 sigma moment from station 0 divided by sigma function of area will give you the LCB the longitudinal center of buoyancy so this uh, holds good and um, so in this way you can calculate the LCB and the uh, KB for uh, such uh, ships you can find the volume you can find the LCB uh, you can find the KB all of that is possible from a Bongian sheet so you can see the importance of Bongian sheet so m most of you who will go into the naval architecture career in ships shipyards or uh, uh, consultancy companies they will be doing a lot of these Bongian sheet work you will have to definitely calculate the volume under the submerged that is known as uh, that is a volume submerged and the LCB KB etc you will have to find out okay now that is one thing then let us suppose we have a body uh, 
okay and let us suppose it has an initial water line w l and uh, it has a final water line w 1 l 1 and um, it has dipped through an angle delta t. So, the body initially at w l has gone up to w 1 l 1 because it has dipped or submerged by an additional amount of delta t. Now, we can see it see the problem the, that we are going to define in two different ways. The first one is the change in moment The first one is that the change in moment of volume, change in the moment of additional volume is equal to the moment of additional volume. Change in moment is equal to the moment of additional volume. So, the change in moment, so the change in moment, okay, let us take the initial volume, the initial volume and uh, initial volume, the change in the moment is given by delta of x b, where x b is the center of buoyancy into del, this represents the change in the moment of the additional volume. The, so, the change in the moment of volume, this delta represents the change, change in the moment of volume is equal to the moment of the additional volume. What is the moment of, what is the additional volume? Additional volume is A w into delta t. So, the additional moment is A w into delta t. A w is this. Now, remember this delta t is very small. Therefore, A w does not change as we go in this uh, dipping. This submerging, because of this submerging, the um, A w does not change. Uh, this is because of the assumption that uh, the delta t is very small. Therefore, A w into delta t is the additional volume. And where does this additional volume act? The additional volume always acts at the um, centroid of the additional area, a uh, 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 centroid of this uh, water line. So, the centroid of the water line of the uh, centroid of the water plane area or the centroid of the um, that water line area is known as the center of flotation x f the center of flotation. So, x f into a w delta t will give you the moment due to the additional volume. So, there is a slight difference between this and this the difference is that this is the additional volume additional volume into where it is acting x f is the moment due to that additional volume. This is the um, change in the moment itself. It is the change in the moment uh, of the volume. So, change that moment of volume is what? Volume is uh, the moment the volume itself acts we can assume that the volume itself total volume of the sh uh, underneath acts at x b. x b is a longitudinal center of buoyancy. So, at x b the cent, uh, volume acts, the, uh, the total volume of the ship acts at x b and therefore, x b into del gives you the moment uh, of the ship. Now, the change in moment will be del of delta of that. So, the change in the moment of the volume, uh, let me remove this, it is confusing. So, if I write it like this, it is better. Change in the moment of volume is equal to moment of additional volume. So, you get this concept. Similarly, you will have delta of y b into del equals y f a w delta t delta of z b into del equals z f into a w into delta t. So, you have three formulas here. Now, we can expand this. This is a product of two terms. So, you know that you can expand a derivative of the product of two terms. So, that will give you delta into delta x b plus x b into delta of del is equal to x f 
into a w into delta t and del of delta y b plus y b into delta del equals y f into a w into delta t del of delta z b plus z b into delta of del equals z f into a w into delta t. Okay. So, this gives you the uh, some terms then now dividing by delta del equals a w delta t this reduces to if you do some manipulations this reduces to x b minus x f minus x b is equal to d of x b by d t del by a w and y f minus y b equals d of y b by d t into del by a w. Now, uh, what does this mean? In a case when x f is equal to x b, so which is like saying that where the curve of the longitudinal center of flotation meets the center uh, meets the curve of center of uh, mo meets the curve of the longitudinal center of buoyancy the dy by dt is equal to 0 like this so if xf equal to xb then xf minus xb is equal to 0 is equal to dxb by dt so implies this implies that the uh, where the curve of this is a very important thing So, what that implies is that if the curve of the center of flotation intersects the curve of the center of buoyancy, then x f is equal to x b at that point. So, x f minus x b is equal to 0 is equal to d x b by d t. So, what does it mean when d x b by d t is 0? That means that this curve of x b versus draft will be vertical. The tangent at that point, the tangent will to the latter curve means the tangent to the center of buoyancy curve will be vertical so this is an in, this is an interesting and useful form uh, useful derivation which you will be using in some places so where the center of uh, flotation um, intersects the center of buoyancy so where, where the center of flotation intersects the center of buoyancy the tangent to the uh, a later curve that is the center of buoyancy curve will be vertical okay um, then if we do a little more mathematics xf minus xb divided by zf minus zb is equal to dxb by dzb that is just i just uh, divided the two together from one from the uh, i just divided one from the other therefore um, uh, similarly, uh, so this is just used like that in some places x f minus x b divided by z f minus z b is equal to d x b by d z b um, is another formula that is used in some places. So, um, there is an LCB curve and there is an LCF curve. So, you can have an LCB curve and an LCF curve and uh, when you draw them together in the draft, uh, so it will be like this. Now, draft will be here. 
so you have the draft and here you have the LCB curve uh, and LCF curve so one curve is like this one curve is like this so at that point if this is the LCB curve the tangent to the curve will be vertical so this interesting uh, interesting derivation you should take home today so with that i'll stop today's class um, i'll stop today's lecture thank you mm -hmm.